Monopoly. Worst game ever. Monopoly. You just you have to have an end game. You have to have an accelerated end game. Mm -hmm. You have to have a certain point in the game where you take certain rules and throw them out. And that accelerates the game to a conclusion. That's what that's what that's the secret. Here's the thing about Monopoly and Succession. In the end of the third season of Succession, there's a scene where the kids are all playing Monopoly. Yeah. It's a perfect parallel with the show. Because Monopoly and Succession were warnings by the creators of them against capitalism. Yeah. And yet both of them make capitalism seem awesome. Right. These guys are playing Monopoly in Tuscany. Maybe you could too someday. Postcard here. Awful typography destroys suspension of disbelief. <laughs> That's from Sean Henry. <laughs> Are there any things or moments in movies that will always knock you out of the movie? One for me is in the 1990 Zeffirelli Hamlet where Helena Bonham Carter as Ophelia is embroidering the Bayou Tapestry, an 11th century embroidery of the Norman Conquest. <laughs> Random work for a Dane. This is the most Sean Henry postcard <laughs> We've gotten yet. <laughs> this is supposed to be one specific moment for movies, or does he get upset whenever someone is doing an anachronistic tapestry <laughs> I don't know. in a movie? I get thrown off whenever there is a photo of someone. It's like the police file photo, and it's like an 8 by 10 headshot, clearly, of the actor, that they couldn't find something that looked like, you know, just kind of a slightly blurry photo. In modern times, the police do this, and it's of... Clearly a shot of Paulette Godard, just a shot of her on set, or maybe just cut from a frame of the movie. She's just looking amazing and exuberant. This is your police shot? How long did you she have to pose down by the docks? This El Peon Taqueria postcard is from Tim in Rhode Island. Dear Matt, when are you going to start a new show in which you interview members of a band's rhythm section? You could call it We'll Come to the Bass Men. Please pay me $1 for this idea, your pal Tim. Tim, I will not pay you 10 cents for that idea. But thanks for sharing. Only because he's stingy. <laughs> when you go to our website, welcometothebasementshow.com, you can see every episode we have. You can see all kinds of colors and interesting pictures. And there are PayPal donation buttons you can click on to support this show with a one-time or rolling monthly donation. A rolling monthly donation is where you pay a little bit every month. Supports the show. Here are some of our rolling monthly donors. Luke, Amber, Thomas, Jed, Kieran, Harrison, Marissa, Larissa, Catherine, B.A. Mikey D., Chris, Laura, Kai, Dave, Martin, Caitlin, Beth, Guide, Maurizio, Einar, and Sella. The rest of our donors later in the show. Viewer questions. Sabrina Ventrella. What advice would you give to someone graduating film school? Well, I suppose it depends on what you're looking to get into, but general advice would be start writing a screenplay immediately. Even if you have the bones of a screenplay or scene one of a screenplay, that's something you need to have under your belt because inevitably, or perhaps inevitably, you will run into someone who is in a position to give you a job or money and they'll say, what are you working on? And it's good to have something to tell them. So have a screenplay, have treatments. If you want to be a director, start working on your reel, which if you've gone to film school, you probably have already done. But keep on doing it, because it can always get better. So basically just work. Borrow equipment, borrow your friends, borrow money. Work, work, work. Take the small jobs to work your way up, find oh, out yeah. how everything works. PA jobs, all that yeah. stuff. My question is from Christopher Bynum. What is the best movie you've seen on the show, and why is it Tough Guys Don't Dance? You know why Tough Guys Don't Dance is the best movie we've seen on the show? Better than Totoro. Better than Sunshine, A Tale of Two Humans. Wingshauser. Everything he does is Nicolas Cage level freaky in the movie. In our P.O. box, we get records often, and I listen to them and talk about them on this show. I have a record to talk about today. It is R.L. Burnside, A Bothered Mind. If you look at this man, look at the picture of that man, you can tell he's got a bothered mind. Yeah. And, you know, the shirt's not quite tuck tucking in right. So. We all make that mistake sometimes. Yeah. This is from the good people at Fat Possum Records. And it seems like what they're trying to do here is trying to update the blues to a more modern context by merging it with things like hard rock and hip hop. It's basically the same thing they were doing at Chess Records when they released Electric Mud. There is some interesting music on here. There's some good music on here. There's some music that really doesn't work very well and it's not very good. And when this album succeeds, when this idea succeeds, it's when they stick to the blues, and they add modern elements to sort of build it up. 
when they try and merge the blues with other genres, that's where it sounds not as good. And the track with Kid Rock is dreadful. I prefer a delicious cinnamon scope. No, yes. Walter PPK with silence. Yeah. It's quite a gun, the Walther Pupuk. Buongiorno. Do you have an appointment? Well, not really, but I would like to see the manager of it all possible. I didn't know I needed an appointment to go to a store. Please, I couldn't think of it. Welcome to Walmart. Do you have an appointment? <laughs> Get some brandy. Brandy. Now that is a woman after my taste. I want to take her on a date. <laughs> you forgot the brandy. He's going to give her some of his man brandy. Mandry? Tu sei pazzo. Tu sei pazzo. Due pazzos. <laughs> Come on. Come on, we're late for the squid game. <laughs> Request permission to join Admiral Davenport in my old unit. Admiral Davenport, the most relaxed admiral in all the Navy. <laughs> he uh, was given that name when he went through Ellis Island. He was Admiral Couch before. <laughs> I'll flip all of the old-timey train set <laughs> levers. We got some more rolling donors to thank. Bernard, Alfred, Mary Beth, Grant, RPC Services, Reed, Anna, Shelby, Jerry, Jared, Jeff, Jason, Brett, Abraham, Sean, JP, and Lindsay. Thank you. We've got two packages to open. Let's get busy. This is from Michael in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, Michael emailed me about this. Greetings from Alabama. I'm happy to hear that Matt enjoyed the 300 string LP I sent last time. I did. They are still performing in Birmingham and are a local favorite. That sounds like it would be a fun show. I've enclosed two more albums. There is a newer pressing of Paul Simon's Graceland. Ah. Which includes a poster, as well as the original debut album from Chagall Guevara, which you may recognize from the soundtrack to Pump Up the Volume. I do. Mm. I think that's the only song I've heard by this band. Now i got a whole CD. I got to see Chagall Guevara reunite at a concert in Nashville last year with my family. After 30 years apart, they still sounded like no time had passed at all. Which still living band would you like to see a reunion concert from? I'd say Talking Heads or maybe The Smiths. Yes, I'd like to see both of those bands reunite and just fight on stage. Because they don't like each other. You never know. You know, we never thought the Pixies were going to get back together. And they worked just fine. Until they started fighting and they got rid of uh, Kim. The Talking Heads reunited for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They did a bunch of songs and they sounded great if you watch that it's like they all just had a key in their back that they wound up and mm -hmm. like talking heads energy came out the original attractions reunited with elvis costello to oh. for the rock and roll hall of fame and he hates bruce thomas with a fire he wrote a song about it it's really? called how to be dumb <laughs> it's not flattering okay thanks for keeping the great shows coming michael p.s i think the wax seal was a bit much on further examination he sent us a <laughs> Letter with a wax seal. Yeah. All right, this is from David James Keaton. Who's David James Keaton? What? He's the guy who wrote this novel. Look at that, Head Cleaner. It's called Head Cleaner. A nonstop thrill ride blending science fiction, horror, and a lot of humor for readers who enjoy Chuck Pahonanek and L Lauren Bukies. I enjoy the pronunciation of those names. Thank you. So keep a lookout for this at your local bookstore. If not, you can probably get it online. Oh, this is important to know. I used your movie immersion tank in this one. But don't worry, I gave you credit in the credits. Oh. So, let me, let me look at the credits. Oh, yeah, he's got a long list of credits, and then he says, The Welcome to the Basement Crew for the movie immersion tank. Cinema immersion tank, bud. That's all right. Cinema. That's all right. Well, if he's going to use it, he's got to use it right. It's okay. Hey, music can calm the savage beast. It's breast. People get things wrong. It still means something good. <laughs> Rewrite the book. Rewrite the book. Hey, he sent us other things, too. Oh, cool. It's Talk Talk. Seems to be an EP. Spirit of Eden. No, I don't... I, that's not an EP. I think that's an album. That's a full album? Yeah. I think those are just long songs. And finally, a movie. Talking Rainbow Butt. Annihilation. Oh, Talking Rainbow Butt. Thanks, guys. 